Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to another emulation preview video. In this one, we are taking a look at Persona 5 running on RPCS3, this PlayStation 3 emulator. So this video, it's not a live commentary as I usually do them. This one is actually me talking after having previously recorded the game footage. If you guys are not aware, this game, Persona 5, has incredibly restrictive usage policies for both YouTube and Twitch content. And to be honest, I just wasn't willing to do a live commentary and including all of the music and all of the in-game cutscenes and commentary and all this kind of stuff because Atlas Entertainment, the Japanese component of Atlas anyway, are synonymous basically at this stage with persona games and copyright and content striking both youtube channels and twitch streamers for featuring their games in their content this especially sucks due to the fact that persona 5's soundtrack is probably musically at least one of the best soundtracks well when i say musically i mean instrumentally it's it's just an absolutely outstanding soundtrack and it perfectly fits with the uh, visual aesthetic of the game Another reason for not doing this live and not just going full in and showing just raw gameplay is the fact that there are apparently also issues with showing certain boss fights and showing certain areas in video footage and once again I'm just not willing to uh, to take that chance and get a copyright strike on the channel at this stage. So let's just take a look at performance and as you can basically see in all of these scenes and fights so far that we have basically been locked to 29.99 or 30 FPS practically 100% of the time. Now I'm not going to be only showing these starter areas because if you've been following this game's optimizations on this emulator and across all other channels they basically only show this very starting area and while I'm not going to show you story spoilers or I'm not going to show you like stuff that I would consider spoilery content, I am going to show you some slightly later on stuff, maybe like an hour into the game, an hour and a half. What I also cannot show you is cutscenes or movies or whatever you want to call them, the little cut sequences that show like story intermissions and further plot and all that kind of stuff. So I can't show that because once again, I'll get copyright strike of it, copyright struck, copyright stricken if I do. So yeah, the map works and as you can basically see, everything in this area is practically perfectly rendered. Uh, we're also rendering this at, I think, 150 times resolution scale. So we're rendering this actually at 4K resolution. I'm not sure if it's 150 or 200%, maybe it's 200%. Um, I'll have to look back at my settings and I will also have any settings that are different from the default settings listed down in the description of this video if you want to see what settings you should be using. So yeah, this game, it's it's definitely one of those games that I would highly advise you play, even if you can only get it on PS3 or it is available on PS4 as well, but it is just such an amazing game. Like I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is because I'm more so of the background of playing like Final Fantasy games and stuff like that. So Persona games were not, uh, were not like the games I played growing up. So yeah, as you can see, we have skipped on into the subway, the Tokyo subway, and we are going to see in this area that we are not locked to 30 FPS. Now, currently I am using my 7700K, but as some of you in my community may already know, I have been having some issues with my 7700K. Basically, I'm not able to run it at anywhere near its clock speeds because it basically is in the process of dying. I do currently have a new CPU ordered. Uh, I ordered an 8700K and that is currently shipping to me. We are going to see, yeah, you can see there, there's like small little bits of frame skipping or stuttering and it happens from time to time and that might just be due to my CPU, but playing this, when I played this, sorry, on my 3770K system, I basically got exactly the same thing. So I don't think it's actually an issue with my CPU or any of my hardware. And we are in the, what is the name of this area? Does it show us the name? So Backstreet's area. And you can see that we're getting like 29 FPS and there, 30, 20, 23 FPS. So well, even though we are rendering, even though we are rendering, sorry, at 4K resolution, the resolution doesn't actually matter at all. I was able to render this at 4K on my 3770K system. And that system has a GTX 680 two gigabyte graphics card in it. So it is quite low end. And um, I was basically, not seeing any performance dips when I was upping the resolution. Because if you weren't aware, 
in RPC S3, this PlayStation 3 emulator, you can basically just up the resolution and it doesn't really impact your performance at all. Um, so yeah, as we run around this area, you can see that we're not 100% locked to 30 FPS, but I would imagine if you had a higher clocked CPU than the one I am currently using, my, sorry, I meant to say earlier, my 7700K is currently clocked at 3.6 gigahertz, because if I, if I go above that on my, um, on my current setup, I, um, it basically just doesn't work. <laughs> so, yeah. RIP my 7700K. So yeah, let's just continue over here and we're just going to advance the story a little bit. So we're going to ring this buzzer and he's not going to be home. And then we're going to have to go to the uh, the cafe, La Blanc, I believe it's called. Okay, it looks like no one's home. So yeah, this, this, this uh, delivery man is going to tell us that there's nobody home and we're going to have to run all the way over here. And you can see on the minimap there's a little... Uh, coffee shop symbol and that's where we have to go so we're going to be turning in the left here and we're going to be going to leblanc and i'm not going to enter into this story into the i am going to enter into this area sorry but uh, i'm going to skip this because there's some slight story spoilers in this next sequence so yeah i'm going to be skipping this on again to the castle or school dungeon or whatever it's called so yeah let's uh you can see inside of this palace or dungeon, we are having some weird little shadow issues. Now, if anybody knows how you can fix this, or if there's a setting that you can change inside of RPC S3 itself, let me know down in the comments, because it's quite annoying to me. Even though it's it's not terribly distracting, it's just when you're looking for graphical errors like I do when I play through these games, um, it does it is actually quite striking. So yeah, this is basically the school palace or castle dungeon or whatever you want to call it and uh, it's basically just a tutorial for the game um so yeah let's just continue on you can see that we're basically just locked completely 100 percent of the time at uh at 30 fps so that is actually i wasn't expecting myself to be locked to 30 fps as much as i am especially considering as i said my cpu is basically on its last legs or on the way out at the end of its life we'll say that much crap my bag is stuck Okay, he's not stuck. I think that's just a little bit of dialogue. Okay, so we're trying to escape the mysterious castle and search for the exit, and those are our objectives. So we're just gonna stay navigating throughout this level and seeing how our performance is. So yeah, no matter pr practically no matter what we do, we are still uh, getting 30 FPS or 29.89 or 29.99 FPS. We're just gonna be dodging some of these knights over there, they're looking for us. Okay, so uh, let's continue up the spiral staircase and see what our performance is like in the next area. Okay, this is the longest staircase ever. And there we go, there's our doorway. Okay, so loading times are actually probably significantly better than they were when I played this on PS3 previously. So that's one improvement I guess you could say over the uh considering this is a PlayStation 3 and you can't really you can't really compare it. Well, you could probably graphically compare it to the uh PS4 version of the game considering it does look a lot better than the PS4 version of the game and the PS3 version. So examine eerie statue. These statues are so creepy. So yeah, let's examine the statue and we are going to go down here and we're going to free Morgana. So once again, there are some very slight story spoilers um, in this section. So I'm going to skip this little conversation piece that we're going to have and I'm going to bring us on to just after it when we are going to be lowering the drawbridge. So yeah, let's, uh, let's just follow Morgana up here and let's find out exactly what we're meant to do. So talk to Morgana. What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm lowering the bridge. <laughs> Frizzy hair. I guess that's my name now. Frizzy hair. Okay, so pull the jaw, he said. Pull the jaw. And that's even creepier than it ever was before. But uh, at least the drawbridge is down and we can now, um, we can now move forward. Okay, so we are just about, I believe, to get introduced to Morgana's persona. Um, for anyone who's not aware, or not not aware, but if someone who's not familiar with the Persona series, this uh, the Personas are basically their, like, I wouldn't say an alter ego, but it's like a, I guess like a hidden spirit inside each person. Um, and this is Morgana's. Is it Zoro? Yeah, I think it's called Zoro, or is it Zoro? 
Zorro with two R's, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so I've only played this game for about probably five hours, probably on the PS3 version, and probably about seven hours on the RPC S3 variant of the game. So um, yeah, I've while playing it on RPC S3, I had much better performance when I previously played it, when my 7700K wasn't acting up performance-wise. But since my 7700K uh, has been broken, I haven't really dropped below 20 FPS, and it has been in dungeons and in palaces and stuff, generally locked to 30 FPS, and in battle scenes like you're seeing now, locked to 30 FPS. And also I haven't run into any game breaking bugs that have stopped me from progressing the story. Um, I haven't finished the story yet so I can't say for myself. I know a lot of others on the internet and on the, compatibil on the compatibility guide mind you. They say that this game is 100% completable. So I'm going to take their word for it considering I haven't seen any game breaking bugs that have hindered my progress in game. But yeah, it's, um, it's really cool to see that this game is running as well as it is on this emulator. Um, especially when you consider I know the emulator RPC S3 has been around for a while, but generally games don't run this well on emulators this early in their life, and it's just amazing to see this game running in this kind of fashion. Okay, so let's just continue along. We got a new skill. What are we getting? We're learning a new skill for Arsene called Cleave. So yeah, we're going to see what that's like in our next battle anyway. So yeah, let's just load through this loading screen, and we should transform back into our well, our regular clothing away from our persona, outfit or costume or what will you. Now you might see on some of these little images of the characters talking here that there will be some visual bugs from time to time. Um, it doesn't happen all the time and to be honest I don't know what causes them. If any of you guys down in the comments section knows what causes, the, causes these issues, let me know and uh, I'll include it in my update video. Considering this video is kind of my first look at Persona 5 on this emulator, um, I'll probably do an update one with some performance settings that uh, I can either get from you guys or I can learn from some of the developers over on the RPCS3 Discord server. Okay, so we're back in and we're going to be in... Okay, so auto recover. So, tutorials, let's triangle, so press square, would you like to perform auto recover? Yeah, so that's our HP and SP probably. Uh, maybe it's only maybe it's only HP that gets fully recovered. But um, anyway, yeah, let's just continue on and uh, we're going to be progressing through this palace dungeon once again. So we're back once again into another conversational cutscene. Um, this one has been included because it doesn't really include any spoilery story stuff, so... Um, I just want to include it because to show that these uh, little conversational cutscenes uh, do correctly work. So here we go, we're about to uh, get into another fight. So let's just uh, wait for this guy to approach. So we get the choice. I'm gonna just choose let's fight. And uh, yeah, let's get back. Let's get back into a fight and we'll, we'll try out our cleave ability that we previously unlocked with Arsene. Okay, so what do we get the option to do this time? Okay, so let's use a Persona skill, and we'll use Cleave. Oh, that does quite a bit of damage. It does take away from our HP though, doesn't it? Okay, so we're using Garu with Zoro, and... Rip. R.I.P. And she missed, and we'll use a Persona skill again, and I'm gonna use... E? Eha? Is that what it's called? And she's weak to that, so that's good to know. Okay, so we win, and who's gonna... anyone gonna level up? Well, the XP. Morgana leveled up to level 3. Awesome. Okay, so guys, I'm going to leave it there. That's um, that's basically my first look at Persona 5 on this PlayStation 3 emulator, RPC S3. So, as always, guys, if there are any games that you want me to test, just leave a comment down in the comment section below. And what I generally do is, if I have the game, or if I can find the game cheaply on eBay or something, I will buy it rip it and I will test the game out for you guys absolutely no problem. So um, yeah, once again guys, cheers for checking out the video. Remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.